the, one of the, the, the most important translators of the great uh, post-war uh, poet uh, from Romania, Paul Ceylon, was in fact a student of Robert Kelly. Um, his name is Pierre Joris, and he couldn't be here today, and so I'm going to read his wonderful uh, tribute to Robert. Dear Robert, you will never retire, exclamation point. <laughs> when I arrived at Bard in the fall of 1967, I was awed by this huge bearded figure, the poet professor, and so I came to meet you and ask for advice. How could a young, would-be Euro poet improve his language skills? English was my fourth language. So as to be able to write good poems in contemporary American, I thought you'd suggest specific American literature courses yours or someone else's offered at Bard, but instead you told me to listen to baseball game commentaries on the radio <laughs> because you said that's where the American language was most alive, creative, and inventive. And Young Puzzled Me did just that, thus not only learning indeed a lot about the language, but also falling in love with that strange American pastime, baseball, and in the process becoming a lifelong Mets fan. <laughs> in fact, I never took a single literature course with you, though you agreed to be my senior project advisor for my translation of Paul Ceylon's breath term. And no one could have done that better. During that year, I also witnessed my first Robert Kelly poetry reading, an immense pleasure and lesson in the use of physical presence and projective voice aligning a Brooklyn Irish opera lover's basis melodic ease <laughs> and bravura with a jazz savvy rhythmic richness. At that time, I also started reading your work somewhat gingerly, awed as I was by the incredible width of your knowledges and interests. And let it be noted, the immense pleasure of reading you has never slapped since, carrying through these 54 years, nor has my strong agreement with your sense of the process of daily writing work and thus my own latest book of poems, Interglacial Narrows, opens with a brief but I think essential how to say methodological or even epistemological quote from a recent work of yours, and I quote, wake up, write down, end quote. <laughs> what first both intrigued and entranced me in your work was your immense curiosity, that deep sense of wonder you had kept intact at a time when coolness, a blasé stance of hip disconnection, an arrogantly assumed aloofness was the order of the day. The breadth of your concerns, the vision of the contemporary poet as someone for whom all data whatsoever are of use, like Pound, Goethe, Coleridge, because, as you wrote, such poets, quote, do not have hobbies, they eat everything, end quote. <laughs> and thus, your vision, quote, that there can be, and at historical times, have been, now is, a scientist of holistic understanding, a scholar, a scientist of the whole, the poet, end quote. I do not know if I have managed to do justice to that vision of yours, but that quest is still with me today. That your vision is, as I strongly believe, central in making or keeping poetry a core cultural event in this, our ever more complex human and other than human world, I have also tried to show by editing those two RK volumes, the one gathering your essayistic work and the other weaving a wide network of responses to your ideas. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Vielen <laughs> 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 Dank. I don't know, dear Robert, for having opened and made accessible those wide American and beyond spaces, mental and physical, spiritual and cultural, for me and those innumerable others who met you at Bard or through your books. A few years ago, when on a visit to Linden House in Annandale, you told me that you had no plans to retire as yet. I jokingly breathed this loud sigh of relief, claiming that this was reassuring, as otherwise you'd have all the time in the world to write those poems. <laughs> well, today I can only say, please do so for a long time to come. Yeah.